Hello and welcome to the Northern Section regular season finale of Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com. It's the PlayOnSports.com pregame show live from Cardinal Stadium in Corning, California. I'm Frank DiRienzo with Nick Dobis on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Tonight's matchup features the visiting West Valley Eagles against the host Corning Cardinals. West Valley comes into tonight's game with an overall record of 8-1, 3-1 in the Northern League, while the home team, Corning, is 4-5 with a 1-3 record in the Northern League. That's right, Frank. The Eagles find themselves in a bit of a smash mouth test here before the playoffs begin next week on the road against a team who is extremely committed to run the ball and has played de decent defense at times this season now the Eagles are 4-0 on the road this season while the Cardinals are 1-2 I think the big question for the Eagles is can they win the points and the momentum in the second and third quarters if they can continue to average just over 11 points in those quarters it will take the Corning crowd and Cardinal momentum out of this game Key players for the Eagles tonight is going to be Austin Clark, an all-purpose threat for the Eagles, averaging just over 105 total yards a game. He had two touchdowns in the first four minutes in the second quarter last week and nearly had a punt return for his score, but was called back because he just barely stepped out of bounds. Also, Brady Castleman has been on fire these last three games, 479 yards rushing and seven touchdowns as well, so look for him to get the ball a lot. And uh, Tyler Bennett, who is the physical and emotional leader of this Eagles defense, will need not only to play, be a very physical presence on that edge, but also be ready to eliminate the red zone passing games for the Cardinals. So if they can squeeze the Cardinals into the tight red zone and force them to kick field goals, they have a great chance of winning this ball game, Frank. And I'm taking a look at my uh, sheet here, and it looks like both of these teams are very, very relied, reliant on the, on the, uh, the running game. And... Uh, they combine, uh, sorry, I'm trying to read my sheet here. The uh, Looks like they combined for about 569 yards on the ground. Oh, they, bo they both have 569 yards on the ground, uh, with Cor Corning only edging them out by one yard, and only 104 combined, both of these teams, through the air. So, you know, both of these, uh, both of these teams are going to be we're just going to see a lot of wing T, I think. It's just going to be a lot of dump outs to running backs and full backs. And, you know, Corning has just, a, you know, about five guys they use for the running game. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like we're going to be taking a, a step back about 40 or 50 years on the football field. Mm -hmm. And uh, not, not to be see too much passing, but it could play big here. Now, the Cardinals currently sit in the last playoff spot or the last playoff spot out and will need a win tonight and for Winters to lose to force a tie. Now, the Cardinals have lost four of the last five games, but they need to forget all that and seize tonight as an opportunity to pull off a huge upset on senior night and really shake up both the top and the bottom of the Division II playoff tree. I think the question for the Cardinals is, you know, we know they love to run the ball, but can they wear down the Eagles' defensive front, and can their defense hold the Eagles under 17 points? Now, Cardinals' defense, when they only give up 13 points a game, they win. But if they exceed 18 points, they lose those games. So the Cardinals really can't afford to let this game turn into a sprint on the scoreboard. We're going to be looking for Chase uh, Madej, who had a decent game last week. Nate, Nate Fultz is just 43 yards away from eclipsing the 1,000-yard mark for the season. And Thomas Lowe had seven tackles in the sack for the Cardinals' defense last week. So look for those players to step up huge and play in. If, uh, and play big if they want to be successful tonight. And with that running game, they're going to have to uh, hold on to the ball because this uh, West Valley Eagles defense has forced 17 takeaways this season. So that, that's going to be something we're going to have to watch for. It's going to be ball security, and it's just going to be the running defense. And uh, Corning is lacking in that department. They've uh, been struggling as of late, stopping their opponents. Uh, they have five guys who average 4 to 4.9 tackles per game. Wow. But that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's it. All the other guys have significantly less. Yeah, they're going to so. need a huge team effort tonight to stop uh, this West Valley Eagles offense. So mm -hmm. it should be an entertaining smash mouth football game. A lot of a lot of running on the ground and a lot of hard hits. So we'll see what happens here in just a few minutes. Well, that's going to do it for our PlayOnSports.com pregame show. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a few minutes. Friday Night Football begins next on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com.
Welcome back to Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com. Coming to you live from Corning, California. I'm Frank Durienzo with Nick Dobis on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Tonight's matchup features the 8-1 West Valley Eagles visiting the 4-5 and Corning Cardinals as we're ready for the kickoff here. And maybe we can squeeze in some analyses. What do you think? Nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it's going to be too tricky between these two teams here, Frank. Both teams love to run the ball, so we're going to see whoever does it the best is going to win this game. And the kick is away, and it's a long one. It looks like it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. So a pretty good leg there. And so as we wait for these, waiting for the rushing attack, as we said before, the the run is going to be prevalent here. Yeah, just looking at last week's game, Cardinals had eight passing attempts and just only eight passing attempts and 55 rushing attempts against y Yrika last week with all six running backs with at least five attempts with the ball. So I expect a heavy dose of the same here from both sides of the ball, okay. both teams here. And as we wait for uh, Chase Madej and company, and he's going to hand it off to number 34. I believe that's Fultz. And so Nathan Fultz out to the right-hand side. And he's going to pick up just about three yards, so it's going to be a second and seven. Yeah, the Cardinals try to catch the uh, the Eagles napping quickly in this game, try to go around the outside. Eagles had nice pursuit to cut that off to just a two-yard, one- to two-yard gain. And what you're also going to notice here from Corning is uh, as soon as the play is called and they break out of their huddle formation, it's just about two or three seconds before they snap the ball. So that catches the defense off of guard just a little bit. And as you can see here, they come up to the line. And just like that, it's snapped. And so it's going to be handed off to Fultz again up the middle. And he's only going to get a couple here, maybe even one. And so it's going to be a third and long already within a minute of this game. Yeah, they tried to hit the Eagles with a little power play there. But uh, Austin Clark came in from his cornerback position and blew that up nicely. And uh, we mentioned him in the pregame. He is going to have to have a big physical game on that edge, set it, and not let that Cardinal running game get outside. And we're ready here yet again. And it's going to be a pass this time, and it's going to be almost tipped. And so it's going to be complete to Colton Peterson, but they are going to be short of the fourth down, and so they're going to bring... Uh, sorry, <laughs> short of the first down marker and so they're going to bring out their punt team now yeah and as a receiver you got to know where the yardstick is i mean you know your route is about a five yard out but you got to know where the marker is to get your team that first down and so the punt is away it was nearly blocked there but it's going to go towards the sideline at just about the 46 yard line and that was Austin Clark back to back to receive that punt, but it never got to him. And so excellent field position here. It's going to be marked at just about the 48-yard line. Yeah, and a battle between two running teams, field position is everything. Especially with a short game. With a short game like a running game, yeah, field position is going to be definitely key. I agree. <laughs> I concur, sir. Do you concur, doctor? Yes. <laughs> Indeed. The diagnosis is correct. And so it's going to be handed off on uh, a little end around there. And that's going to be Marcus Simmons on the carry. And so he picks up just about four yards. So a nice little pickup there. And a uh, nice way to fool the defense as the receiver came from the top of your screen down to your bottom of your screen. Yeah, both teams look like they're going to be testing the perimeter very early in this ball game. We'll see if they continue to do that or try to, you know, pound them on the inside as well. And so as we're coming up here, we're ready. He's going to fake the handoff, and he's going to pass it out, and it's going to be through the hands of number seven there, Brady Castleman. And so it's going to be incomplete. And so a little miscommunication there. And it looks like he just kind of threw it behind him. Yeah, and if you're Josh Savio, you got to make that completion right there. Had the nice fake on the play action. Had the Cardinals secondary look in the backfield. You just got to set your three feet and throw and get that first down. Because uh, Brady Castleman was wide open on that play. 
So Josh Savio comes in with the play, and he's under center now, barking out orders. And so a man is in motion, and he fakes the handoff, and he hands it off to Austin Clark, but he's going to get tackled for a loss. Yeah, it was uh, Michael Brisneo. Oh, Brisano. Brisano, excuse me, on that tackle, just blowing through from his uh, defensive line position, and the running back didn't have a chance on that one, and it's going to force a fourth down here. So it's going to be fourth and long at just about the 49-yard line, maybe 48 and a half, and they're going to punt away here, and the punt is away, and takes a bounce, and it goes to just about the 12-yard line, so a very good punt there is going to put him in... Not very good field position here. They're going to have a long, long field, especially with that power running game. Yeah, and they're going to have to kind of pace themselves. Obviously, they want to get on the line fast and try to catch the Eagles off guard, but you don't want to end up, you know, going three and out within two, within the first, you know, 45 seconds of a drive. Find a nice pace. Let your offensive line establish rhythm and see if you can move this ball down the field effectively. And so with that quick huddle, Again, he's going to hand it off to his fullback. And so, and so Thomas Lowe with the carry. Number 32. Thank you. And so we're waiting for the play to come back in as they sub out a couple players here. Yeah, we've seen two early passing plays by both of these offense, and I do think that another key to the game is who can best utilize that passing game. And we're not going to see it a lot out of these two teams, but whoever can you know, make that big play on the passing game, either on third down or in the red zone, has a good chance of winning this game. And so it's going to be handed off to Lowe, Thomas Lowe yet again, and he's going to pick up just a couple more yards here, so it's going to be a third and short situation, which is really what you want in a power running game like this but the only thing is without a passing game the field is much much larger yeah you're very limited i mean on third and short your playbook is kind of open is very open actually but if you only have a limited amount of you know pass plays the defense is going to pick up on that and make the right read so let's see if the cardinal has brought something different heading into this week knowing that uh, their passing game is limited and so as they get on the line quickly and it's handed off to number 34 Nathan Fultz, and he's going to be tackled for a loss. And so the first two possessions, the first two possessions of this game will go nowhere as the punt team comes back down out onto the field. Yeah, very nice play there by Taylor Mc, McPeak. Both defensive lines stepping up big on third down. And no team has yet to uh, convert for a first down in this game. And so it looks like the punter is going to punt it from just about the 10-yard line. So West Valley is looking to get good field position here, depending on the punt. And the punt is a line drive just about midfield, and it peters out and dies right there just at midfield, about the 49-yard line. <laughs> and so 7.30 left in this quarter. You know, Frank, it looks like both of these teams are kind of on a treadmill right now, trying to run as fast as they can, but not really going anywhere, ending up in the same spot. So I think both teams, you know, obviously for the Cardinals, it's senior night, got a lot of emotions running. West Valley, you know, you, this is your last tune-up before the playoffs. Both teams just need to settle down, find that rhythm on the offensive line in order to move the ball. So a lot of implications attached to this game. And so it's going to be a fake to the receiver and then hand it off down the middle and that is Brady Castleman on the carry. And so he's going to pick up a good chunk of yards there, just about seven yards. And so it's going to be a second and three on just about the 43-yard line. They're into Cardinals territory now. Yeah, just a straight-up belly dive right there with Castleman going straight out the Cardinal defense. And the offensive line got a nice push on that left side. And they kind of faked them out there a little bit with the linebackers. They kind of moved towards where the receiver was going, and that opened up a big hole right down the middle. And so he gets a hole down the middle, and he loses the football, and it's going to be Austin Clark with the fumble, and we'll have to see where they mark it here, who they give it to. Ball 
And it looks and like they're going to retain possession here. And they retain possession, and since it was past the first down marker, it's going to be an automatic first down now. So a lucky break for West Valley, even though Austin Clark had a good run anyway. He was already past the first down marker, but then he lost the ball. It got stripped from him. So. Yeah, very nice offset power play there. Uh, he found a nice hole, and, you know, if you're the, the Cardinals defense, you didn't get that ball, but you have to keep trying to strip it and get turnovers here because it's those kind of plays that are going to make the difference in this game. And it's a numbers game on those strips, too. It's just, you know, it's only a matter of time before those start going your way. And so it's going to be a pass out to the right-hand side, a pass intended for Dakota Carter, but it's going to be over his head, over everybody's head, and it's going to be incomplete. So I think the quarterback just needs to settle down with those throws just a little bit and concentrate on where those hands are. And ideally, you want to hit them right in the numbers. Yeah, you know, it looks like an easy throw from home or at the booth up here, but, you know, you get a little nervous, but you just got to trust your mechanics and make the throw. And so it's going to be a straight handoff to the left-hand side to Austin Clark, and he holds on to the ball this time, and it's going to be a pickup of just about three or four yards, and so it's going to be a third and long here. Yeah, I'm really loving the pursuit from this Cardinals defense right now. This is a defense that has, you know, at times the season has played very decently, but other games has given up big points, and they're going to need to be extra stingy tonight in the red zone in order to win this game. And so Josh Savio in the shotgun formation now. And he's going to pass it out. A little bubble screen to Austin Clark, but he it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, it was too oh. bad. Yeah, it was too bad that Clark didn't run down the field Sorry. because that formation totally had the Cardinals confused with a three wide receiver set and a, a wide receiver on the wide side too. The Cardinals were Definitely confused, and that little short pass play let them recover. So fortunate for the Cardinals there. It didn't bite them that time. Yeah, I'm sorry. It wasn't incomplete, but he did have a knee down, so he was ruled down. And so they actually lost yardage on there. So it's going to be a fourth and ten on the 20, uh, just about the 33-yard line, maybe even the 32, with 450 left in this quarter. And they are going to go for it here. And so we're looking to see a pass here with three receivers. And he gets pressured, and he loses the football. And he can't, he can't grab it. Oh, and it's going to be a corning ball. And so fantastic, fantastic, fantastic play. There, strip the ball, gets the sack, and plus gets one of his teammates gets the ball back past midfield. Yeah, that was... Uh... Justin Pye showing off his motors right there, busting through the defensive line, getting a nice strip in. Even though it was fourth down, it would have been turnover anyways. Gives the, uh, the Cardinals excellent field position, their best field position of the night right now. So big defensive play to hopefully shift momentum in their favor. And that was definitely a momentum shifter. He was pursued by the left-hand side, but he couldn't hold on to the ball, which we said that, that was a key aspect of this game, especially with both running games. So, And so he... Hands it off to Fultz here. And he's going to pick up just a couple of yards, maybe even three. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Cody Long. And all the running backs are, th are number 32, 33, and 34. <laughs> so, so bear with me here. <laughs> all share similar numbers and all share about the same workload as well. And uh, it, it hitting in the playoffs, that depth is going to be key for the Eagles. And so it's going to be a handoff yet again. This time to Thomas Lowe, number 32. And so it's going to be a yard and a half gain. And it's going to be third and just about five. Well, we've seen the Cardinals pass on their first third down attempt. We've seen the Cardinals run on the third down attempt. Let's see but they pull out of the hat here with about third and medium. Might try to look for either another outplay to the flats or maybe even test the, uh, test the corners here on a little hitch route. And so here we go with the quick huddle here, and he's going to stay in the shotgun. And so he's going to fake the handoff, and he's going to run up, and it looks like it was going to be a keeper, but he's going to lose yards. And so it's going to be a fourth and very long here 
And so we'll have to see if the coach is going to have the punt team come out or they're going to go for it. And it looks like they might go for it. You know, I know if you're the Cardinals, you know, sitting at four and five, don't have too much to lose, especially in that last playoff spot. But you have to think about field position, I think, in this situation. You've been losing the field position battle early in this first quarter. I would say try to, you know, personally, I would say try to, you know, pin the Eagles deep in their own territory and make them earn it because they haven't gotten a first down yet either. But uh, Corning also has to be careful because, like we said in the pregame, that uh, – West Valley has uh, 17 takeaways this this season, so you know that's uh, that's more than one a game. So yeah, and you don't want to give you know the, you don't want to give the Eagles excellent field position here. So it looks like both sides are going to talk about it. Well, we have a break in the action just to let you know the other games going around the Division Two in the Northern Section. Number one undefeated Sutter is going to be at Orville facing the Tigers tonight. Number two Central Valley is home versus Anderson and is looking for an outright Northern League title. Orland, who is 5-0 at home and 2-2 two and two on the road, is at Winters, which I think is going to be a fantastic game down there, or uh, up there in Winters. And then number five, Wheatland, is home versus Gridley, and uh, they have a very solid chance of winning that as well. So a lot of action going on here tonight. Obviously, we'll try to be looking up that uh, Orland and Winters score because that definitely has implications in this game. And so, like we said, the West Valley uh, defense is looking to stop Corning here with a little bit of momentum on their side with the with the forced fumble and sack. And so he's going to roll out to the left, and he's going to throw across the field, and he does have room to run, and he's going to be very close, but it looks like they're going to they're going to spot it very close. And given the implications that it was four and eight. They might have to come out and measure here, but they are going to give him the first down, and so the chains will move. And so an excellent play there is kind of like a little hook and ladder. Yeah, action. a little nice little play there by uh, Coach Studer there to run a, the weak side screen, get everyone looking left and leak the tight end out, get your offensive line out there to throw some blocks, and they just do get that first down, the first first down of the game here. So that's a big move. That's a big momentum uh, maker for the Cardinals. And so the ball is going to be on the 37-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 with two minutes left in this first quarter. And they're ready all already, and they're going to hand the ball off to Nathan Foltz, but he's going to take a loss. And so the defense read that all the way. And just to see a white jersey is there. Yeah, both defensive lines for both of these teams have gotten good pushes off the line. And really force the these offenses in the difficult second and third down situations. Wouldn't be surprised if the uh, the Eagles try to dial up some sort of other blitz to make this a third and even longer after the second down play. And it seems that uh, Corning's going to have to switch it up a little bit here because their basic running attack is is getting stopped by this very stingy defense on the run. But even with that said, it's going to be second and thirteen on the 41-yard line with just about a minute left as they're already on the line. And so it's going to be a pass out to number 12, and it's going to be incomplete, and that Colton Peterson was the intended receiver. And so now it's going to be third and 13, and the clock will stop here at just at 101. Yeah, Marcus Simmons wasn't fooled on that play. Read the slant nicely and played it perfectly. Didn't jump the route too early to pull the flag, and... Uh, Made a nice play to force a third and long. And so they don't pass often because Chase Madej, uh, the junior, he's uh, only thrown for 361 yards this year. <laughs> so it's very rare to see that's that incredible. You know, <laughs> through 10 games. You know, that's uh, it's not much. Yeah, they, they love to run the ball up here in this Northern League. And so the it's going to be muffed snap. It's going to be a muffed snap, and he's going to be sacked. At just about midfield. Yeah, that play didn't have a chance after the ball hit the ground and Larry Tanner just exploded through the line. So it's going to be a fourth and a million here. Fourth and a million yards. <laughs> Might as well be. And so the clock is winding down here in the quarter. I think almost fourth and Chico at this point. <laughs> fourth and Chico, right. And so Giovanni Garcia comes out to punt. 
And it looks like we have Austin Clark ready to receive it. And so here's the punt, and it is away. And it's a high arcing one, but it's going to go out of bounds. And they're going to mark it at just about the, I'm waiting for the referee to get there, just about the 26-yard line. And so 12.6 seconds left in this first quarter. Yeah, as I mentioned last week, Austin Clark nearly had a uh, uh, punt return for a touchdown last week. So I think the Cardinals are going to try to keep it away from him for most of the night, not let them get that special teams opportunity. And so the Corning defense is on now as West Valley's offense gets ready. And Josh Savio is going to hand it off up the middle. And he has room. And he's on the sideline. And I don't think they're going to catch him here. <clears throat> and so it's going to be a very, very long uh, running on that as the time winds down here in the quarter. And I'll have to get a number from you. I believe that was uh, Brady Castleman. With the run right there, had a nice little counter play, bounced it outside, and made a, the first reservations for six in the end zone in this game. And so a fantastic running play. And it looks like it's going to be a 73-yard touchdown run. And so they had it, the ball on the 27 in their own 27, and he just hit the sideline and just revved up that motor and he was running on all cylinders and nobody could catch up to him and so the kick is up and it is good and so West Valley is going to take the lead here seven to nothing yeah he was pretty much gone once he bounced outside that tackle box safety didn't have a good angle on it nice little misdirection play and good blocking by that left side which have, they've been trying to hit all night and uh, up until that point, like, as I said earlier, this first quarter felt like, you know, both teams were on a treadmill trying to run, trying to run, trying to run, but never really got anywhere but except for that play. And uh, now the Cardinals are going to have to, you know, take a deep breath, let forget that one, because as I said, this is an Eagles team that averages 11 points in the second and third quarter. So you, you kind of want to stop the tide from coming and uh, steady the ship and get them ready for halftime. And so with a break in the action... Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. And so we have a new quarter here and a new possession for the Cardinals as they switch spots here. And West Valley is going to kick from right to left here and so that first quarter it was it was not a lot of action until the very very end no not a lot of action the only uh, they only had one first down that corner and that was for Corning who's down seven nothing so kind of a topsy-turvy first quarter there and we'll see how the second one goes and so the second quarter is underway and it's going to be returned here, and they're going to have the wedge, and he breaks out to the left side, and he's going to be tackled at just about the 24-yard line. <laughs> and the Cardinals were about one tackle away from having their own fireworks right there. And just couldn't squeeze out of that last one, or else he would have had a lot of real estate on that left side. And so Corning's quarterback was the return man there, Chase Madej, as he returns it for all of just about 15 yards. And so the ball's going to be on the 24-yard line, first and 10, as we wait for Trace Garrett to bring in the play to his teammates. And, Frank, I think you're right. I think the Cardinals do need to get a little more creative in their offense, especially in the passing game, because it's kind of peanut butter and jelly right now, and the Eagles are eating that up. And so it's going to be reversed on the left-hand side, and so they pick up just a couple of yards. And so Cody Long, number 33, is the recipient of that handoff, but he's only going to pick up a yard and a half, and so it's going to be a second and nine. Ball's on the 24-yard line now. Yeah, and it, it's, the, it's the first downs that have really been holding the Cardinals back. You know, when they get that first, you know, initial four, five, six yards on that first down, their playbook is a lot more open, and they're a very dangerous team. But if you force them in that second and long, then they kind of stalls the offense a little bit. And so the play is going to be 
dead as a flag gets thrown into the field here. And we'll have to see. And it's going to be a false start against Corning, so that's going to push him back five yards. And so it's going to be second and a bunch here with 10.48 left in, the, in this half. And nothing quite also stalls an offense like penalties like that. And uh, Cardinals find themselves once again in the second in very long situation, which this offense is not quite equipped to deal with. And so Corning is ready here with their quick little huddle here, and it's going to be a pass play, and he pump fakes, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield. And so excellent job by the West Valley defense to get in there and sack the quarterback. And so they're going to take an even bigger loss here. And so it's going to be a third and just about 20. It's a third and a million. Yeah. Minus and well. then, you know what, they tried, and that's what we were just talking about. They tried to, you know, hit Colton Peterson on the corner out, but there's two defenders back there because they only sent one wide receiver. So it's a very, very black and white offense that, you know, the Eagles are not being fooled with right now. They need a little bit, they need to convince the play action a little bit more and maybe leak a few more, you know, receivers in the secondary, primarily around the linebacker spot. And so it's going to be a blitz to the left-hand side, and it's going to be thrown, and nobody's there. And the pass was intended. Taryn Dahlgren, who was also their backup quarterback. And so he goes out for a pass, but it's going to be short. And so it's going to be a fourth and 19 on the 15-yard line. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, in a third and 19 situation, you know, everyone in the North State knows that you're going to throw the ball. So if the Cardinals want to, you know, keep stay in this game and keep it in one possession game, they have to find a way to mix up, maybe throw on first down in order to get out of those second and long situations. And so the punt's not going to go anywhere, and it's only going to go about 20 yards. And so West Valley is going to have excellent field position at the 36-yard line, and that's Corning's 36-yard line. Huh. And so not a very good punt there by Giovanni Garcia. And... Things are not looking good for Corning so far as they've been shooting themselves in the foot here in this quarter and a half. No, and you know what? If you're the Eagles right now, you know that you're an 8-1 and one team. You know this is a time where you start to take over the game and kind of enforce your will, especially as an offensive line. So let's see if they do that right here. And so we're ready here as they send a man in motion, Marcus Simmons, and back in motion, and he's going to get the football on the left-hand side. And he gets down to about the sidelines, but he's going to step out. And so Marcus Simmons is going to pick up a couple of yards here. And that's what we were talking about. Maybe Corning needs to start doing those kind of plays because their inside handoffs are not working against West Valley defense. Yeah, and that was a very nice little gimmick play there to send the running back one way, send him right back, hit him in stride, and pick up a nice chunk yards so instead of you know the second and long that Corny's facing the Eagles have had a second and very manageable and like I said second and manageable really opens up the playbook and so they're at the 32 yard line it's second and five and they're not gonna they're gonna hand it off up the middle to Brady Castleman and so he's gonna pick up a couple too and so it's gonna be a third and manageable just under nine minutes left here in this half and so West Valley is charging yet again, and they are putting this defense back on their heels. Yeah, used the motion once again to get the linebackers' attention and just went with the straight haymaker with Brady Castleman up the middle. That's the second time we've seen that simple dive play off the left side. And uh, I, I have a feeling he could break that one for big once again. And so as we await, they're going to hand it off up the middle. Yet again, to Brady Castleman. And so he might have enough for a first down. We'll have to see here. And they will give it to him. And so the chains will move here. And so they're going to have a first and 10 at just about the 24, 25-yard line. Now, if you're the Cardinals defense, you know, you gave up the big 73-yarder at the end of the first quarter. But other than that, they've actually have been playing particularly well, especially on their own side of the field. So it's kind of a gut check time for them. Try to get that big stop or even a turnover here to swing momentum back in their way. And so the wing is in motion. He stumbles a little bit here, and he's going to throw it out, and it's going to be over the head of Brady Scoville. 
And so he was the intended receiver on that. Oh, I'm, the Cardinals got away with that one because Robert Brown had the safety deep on that one, had him beat nicely. I just don't think, uh, I just don't think uh, the quarterback saw him on that one. Fortunately for the Cardinals, it just results in the incomplete pass and very easily could have been a touchdown on that one. So Josh Sabio not able to convert there. It's going to be a second and 10 still on the 25-yard line, just under eight minutes to go in this half. They are leading 7 to nothing, And so they're going to line up with uh, two running backs and uh, two receivers on the bottom half of your screen here, and they are going to have one in motion. And he's going to fake the handoff to him and to the left, and he has a lane. And so Castleman is going to pick up Another first down here, so they're driving, and it all started with that very weak punt. As you remember, it didn't even break midfield, and so West Valley is taking the opportunity and running with it. Yeah, and you know what? You know, Derek Knight and uh, Jason Brown working that left side of the offensive line, giving Castleman some huge holes. That play was very similar to the touchdown play that Castleman took for 73 yards, and uh, you know what? I, th I believe the Eagles have a motto called, if they ain't broke, don't fix it, and that left side ain't broken yet. And so it's going to be a straight handoff to number 10 to the left-hand side, and he's going to be stopped uh, with just about a yard, maybe even two. Oh, hey, and uh, they get a good spot, so it might be even three here. And that was Austin Clark on the carry. And so Austin Clark is doing everything this game so far. Yeah, I'm liking this drive right now by the by the Eagles. Just crunching out the clock, grinding down the Cardinal, and uh, I see I, I have a feeling they're going to find six points here with the next few plays. And so the wing tee, he's going to, and right up the middle is number seven, Brady Castleman, and he is going to get a touchdown. And so it's going to be a 10-yard run right up the middle by Brady Castleman. And so, great job by the offensive line to make that hole. And it was big enough for you to drive a dump truck through. <laughs> but they only had uh, Brady Castleman. They didn't have a dump truck. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, With Brady Castleman's street, I'll take that Castleman truck all night. Sure. <laughs> Made a nice read through the gaping hole and found an easy six points. And so, the kick is up. And it is good. And so, West Valley goes up by two touchdowns now. 14 to nothing with 640 left here in this half. And so West Valley dominating the Corning Cardinals here, and they just don't have an answer for them on defense. No, and that's, you know, that as we said at the beginning of the drive, that's the drive that you want to see, you know, if you're, if you're Coach Greg Grandel, that's the drive that you want to see out of your ball club, an 8 and one ball club. You know, you have excellent field position, take a lot of the time out of the clock and score a touchdown and really force a lot of pressure on this Cardinals offense. And so the West Valley is looking like the 8-1 team that they are. PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com, high school sports lives here. And with that, playoffs, this is the last regular season game, and so next week we are going to see the playoffs start. And I'm kind of excited for that. Oh, I'm very excited. If, even if I'm doing D2 games or D1 games, there's a lot of really good football games, or a lot of football, excuse me, a lot of really good football teams heading into these playoffs, and I think potentially some really intriguing matchups as well. So, you know, I, like, as you said, I'm very excited to see the, uh, the playoff bids and where, the, where everyone ends up. And like we said, this has special implications for the Corning because this for Corning because this is their senior night, and so this is the last time the seniors are going to be here at home. And so it's going to be a line drive kick, and he's going to take it up the middle, and he's going to try to break out to the left, but he's going to be tackled right there. And so Chase Madey, their quarterback, is also their return man, and he gets just about... 14 yards, maybe even almost 20, I should say. Yeah, and not only is it senior night here, but if you know the Cardinals find a way to win this game, and Winters finds a way to lose down in uh, against Orland, you know they find themselves in the tie for the last playoff spot, and not sure you know how the tiebreaker system works 
but uh, they could have a chance here still. So they have a lot to play for still. And so Made is going to hand it off to the fullback right up the middle. Well, they don't really have a fullback, but it's a fullback. <laughs> he was lined up in the fullback position. It's more That's like a I'm stable saying. of running backs, I sure think, they have. <laughs> and so that was Thomas Lowe, 32 of the 32 to 34 running backs. <laughs> 32, 33, the 30 somethings. Yeah. Running the ball. 30 somethings. There we go. I like that. That sounds like <laughs> a good headline, actually. And so as we wait for Mark Bettenbaugh to bring in the. And he's going to wind up. He's going to line up as a left out here and you can almost guarantee that he's probably not going to get the ball and so it's going to be a handoff yet again to Thomas Lowe the junior 5'11 220 and so he's a big kid yeah he is a big kid and what we've seen about uh, from both of these defenses tonight is just absolutely cramming that box if you know, if you're watching at home they put, both teams have put seven eight nine guys in the box because you know both these teams know that they love to run the ball and so it's going to be a quarterback keeper on the left hand side and it looks like he might lose yardage here and so this has been the tune that Corning has sung all game and so they're back to fourth and four or maybe even fourth and five with under five minutes to go here in this half, and Corning's going to have to get something started really quick. Yeah, and they're going to need to get something started on defense after this punt. The defense, like I said, has played well throughout the first quarter, minus you know that last drive and the big play. They're going to have to find a way to turn to force the Eagles to turn the ball over if they want to stay in this thing. And so, with a running attack on both sides of the ball, this game is flying by now. It's almost a half, and it's only 8.15 here in Corning. And so number 10, Austin Clark, is going to return it, and he's going to go back to the sidelines. And so they're going to get excellent field position yet again here. On the th got a flag in the backfield. Oh, and there is a flag on the back in the back. Yeah, it was a roughing the kicker of the penalty right after the ball got off. Punter got kind of smashed by a defender, and depending on the call here, even if it's a uh, – even if it's just running into the kicker, it gives him five yards and might make uh, Coach Studer think about going for it on a fourth and short. We'll see what the uh, we'll see if it's a fifteen or a five yard penalty. And so he's going to walk up, and it's going to be past the line of scrimmage, so it's an automatic first down. And so West Valley with a bonehead move there of roughing the kicker. Yeah, you know. It's hard because you, you, when you're on that punt block team, you want to make the big play and you know eventually get the turnover or even the score. But once that ball's away, you can't touch that kicker, and you gotta you know, unless you're pushed into him, you have to stop your momentum and you know not force a dumb penalty like that. And so with those penalties, that makes coaches just skin yeah. crawl. Yeah, especially those type of penalties right there, Frank. And so it's going to be a handoff to number 33, Cody Long. But he's going to be getting no gain, and so it's going to be a second and 10 here, the 40-yard line. Yeah, Larry Tanner. We've been calling his name early Larry and Tanner. often. Larry Tanner right there, just setting the edge right now and has really made his presence felt on that, especially on the left side of the Corning offensive line. They have had zero to little success due to his efforts. And so Corning is ready again here as Chase Madej hands off with the end around here and he's going to go, well, he's going to backpedal there to try to avoid the the tackle and that was Nathan Foltz, but they're going to lose even more yardage now. And so singing that tune yet again and so they're seeing a third and very long here. Yeah, the, uh, you know, the Cardinals trying to run away from Tanner on that play, but they ran into the speed of Jeremy Williams on the outside. Great play by him to come back from, you know, covering a route and make the play on the edge. And, you know, the Eagles exhibiting not only their toughness on the inside, but showing that they got a bit of speed to cover the edge as well. So we'll see what the Cardinals come up with here with a third and a very familiar third and long. And so he's going to roll out to the left, and he is being pressured here, and he throws it down to the ground. And so they are going to throw the flag, and I think it's going to be intentional grounding since he was still in the pocket. 
Yeah. And so it is going to be intentional grounding, so another bonehead move here. Yeah. You know, uh, Dylan Rosen, once he broke through that line, had Madej's number. And uh, Madej, you know, trying to do the right thing and give her the ball, but got to get outside of the tackle box and at least, you know, throw that ball out of bounds because that's going to be a loss of down as well. And so I said fourth and a million before, but now it's really fourth and a million Now we're million fourth, and a, fourth and about uh, Redding at this point. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so they have the marker down there by the 21, but they have to get to midfield to convert. Yeah. And so 30 yards at least. Well, this offense just needs to find a way to win the battle on first down. You know, usually in football we talk about winning the battle on third down, but the Cardinals are just getting nothing going off that uh, those first down plays, and it's just stalling every one of their drives. And so we're going to see a punt here, and the punt is away, and it breaks midfield this time, and it is going to be returned on the left-hand side or the bottom of your screen, I should say. So Austin Clark with the return, and so he makes it past midfield just about to the 42-yard line. And so 223, so that's plenty of time for them to put yet another touchdown on the onto the scoreboard and really put this game out of reach. Yeah, and you know at this point, Austin Clark had a 41-yard touchdown reception last week. I think, uh, you know, Coach Grandel might be kind of thinking for going for the kill right here, really just stymie any momentum that the Cardinals have and maybe possibly go for a deep pass here. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. And so as we await the coach's decision... We'll see here what he decides to do. And he is in shotgun, shotgun formation with only one running back. And so it is going to be a little bubble screen out to Austin Clark. And he catches it this time. No knee, no knee down on that one. As uh, there was second bubble, bubble screen pass of the, of the day. It's probably just about the fourth passing play we've seen this whole entire game. So yeah, far. and we've seen we saw this formation in the first quarter with three wide receivers to the the wide side of the field, and they have just dumped it off the Austin Clark quickly. I don't know if they're trying to set up maybe a double pass later, or maybe try to you know hit a uh, hit Austin Clark on the you know the pump fake and go because the Cardinals are just sitting in a man to man zero safety defense, and if one guy gets beat, then it's you know touchdown city after that. And so it's going to be a timeout here as the coach is going to talk to his players and so the coach is actually out on the field talking to his players who I, I'm sure he's just trying to boost morale down there and what do you think he's saying to them well you know at this point you know I would I think he's saying like, you know for the most part you guys have been playing really good defense and it's you know the offense isn't getting anything going so source of motivation and inspiration is going to come from you guys you know either in the form of some sort of you know a turnover here or, you know, limiting them from scoring. Because if, if the Cardinals can get the ball back somehow and score right before the half, I mean, that really does change the complexion of this game. So probably telling this team, you know, you know to bear down, get tough, and try to, you know, force an, a third down on the next play and get the ball back. And I'm sure he wants his seniors to make an example since this is their, there is their last home game or their last regular season game. And so I'm sh pretty sure he's trying to pull that support, yeah. pull that morale out of him. And so it's going to be a pass here, but he is going to be sacked in the backfield. And so Josh Savio couldn't find anything going on there. And so it's going to be a third very long. Yeah, almost looked like it could have been a little quarterback draw right there. They had uh, Simmons on the outside. Looked like for the little pump and go, but... You know, the Cardinals defensive line finally stepped up, and now we see the Eagles in a third and long position where we've seen the Cardinals most of the game. So we'll see what they pull out of the hat here. And so West Valley's offensive line having some woes here in this first half. Just a little. Slight and, woes. <laughs> and so it's going to be passed out on the post route to Dakota Carter, and so he is going to be He's going to be stuck at just about the 38-yard line, and so a good tackle there. Yeah, that was Colton Peterson laying down the boom on that one, getting low and just teetering and just, you know, like, and the receiver just fell like a tree on that one to the ground. And that's, you know, and that's exactly that the, you know, the defensive need, that's exactly what the defense needed to do right there. Get the big sack, get the nice form tackle right there. 
I know the Eagles are thinking about it here on fourth down with under a minute left, but if you, you know, if you can stop them here and find a way to score, as I said, really changes the complexion of this game. And so we're going to see another timeout here as time is just about to wind down. And so it's under a minute, about 58 seconds left in this half. And this game has been flying by. This game is only 25 minutes old now, <laughs> and we're already at the second half. But that's what happens when you have uh, a running game because the running the clock never stops. Yeah, right now, you know, the Eagles are loving that fact. But if you're the Cardinals, you've got to be a little bit worried because right now time is not on your side down by two points or two scores, excuse me. And so West Valley is he's going to fake to the fullback and he's going to keep it himself and he's not going to get very far there. Yeah, kind of a curious play call there to go with the quarterback sneak. I don't know if they're just trying to catch the Cardinals napping right there, but you know, with the fourth and, you know, seven, I mean, obviously if that play works, coach looks like a genius, but kind of a curious play call right there. And so Corning is going to get it back here on the turnover on downs and the clock is still running here and so just about 45 seconds left in this half and it looks like we're gonna have a stoppage in play here for some reason officials are going to talk about it and it might be a clock issue and as they figure it out we'd like you to stay tuned for our halftime show that's coming up soon as soon as halftime starts. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see here, I think it was a uh, coach's gripe down there. Yeah, it so looks like I'm going to put about 58 seconds, yeah, 58 seconds on the clock here, which will give the Cardinals a little bit more breathing room here, try to make this a one-score game at the half. And so it looks like they have just about 64 yards to make it to the end zone. And so it's going to be a pass play, and it's going to be a little out route to Colton Peterson. But that's only going to pick him up just about three yards. And so since he's out of bounds, the clock will stop here. So 52.4 seconds left. And so it's going to be a second and maybe, oh, it was more than I thought, second and six. It's yeah. a pickup of four. Didn't look too glorious on, you know, on the film or on the field right there, but you know, that could be a throw that could get um, a day's confidence going. Nice little out route, hits his target nicely in stride. Let's see if he can build on that and get a scoring drive going. And so he's ready here and he passes it out and a little miscommunication to Nathan Foltz. He didn't get his head around to find that. And so just a little miscommunication is gonna lead to an incomplete pass. Yeah, he's gonna want to have that ball back. Not sure if he would have gotten out of bounds if uh, he would have caught that ball, which would have been a clock management issue right there. But uh, at least the incompletion preserves the clock. Now you have to deal with a third down here, uh, you know, a third and longish down here. You don't want to give the Eagles a little bit of time left, too, to score. And so we're ready here, and it's going to be a handoff. And he's going to try to cut it on the outside, and he gets a lot more than the first down. And so good little pickup there, and he goes out of bounds. So 43 seconds left here in this half and they are right near midfield. Yeah, that was Nathan Fultz, as we said earlier in the broadcast, is in the hunt for that thousand yard mark on the season. Made a nice run, trusted his line, which you know hasn't been too trustworthy so far in this first half, but trusted the blocks right there and smartly got out of bounds. Great play there by Fultz. And so it's going to be a first down on the 48 yard line, so a first and 10. And so we'll see here what the uh, play call is going to be. And they are on the right hash mark here. And so it's going to be a pass, and he throws it downfield, and it's through the fingers. And so Nathan Foltz goes through the hands of number 34, Nathan Foltz. Yeah, and there, oh, I'm sorry, continue. Please. No, please. <laughs> so I was just going to say that very nice pursuit there by Hunter Jackson, number 77 from the weak side. You know, I love, you know, it's easy for, you know, the small guys to keep the pursuit, but I love seeing a big guy like that, the nose tackle, breaking the line and not giving up. Didn't get the sack, but forced the pressure, which forced the bad throw. 
and force this, you know, second and ten. And so West Valley looking looking like uh, they're pretty good against that. You know, their pass defense is pretty good with that rush. With their pass rush. And so we'll have to see if it's going to be a pass and play again. And here we go with the pass rush. And Dalton Tracy, the six foot one ninety quarterback for the backup quarterback, I guess tonight is going to get a sack on the other side. But yeah. it's going to be a face mask flag. Yeah, unfortunately, it was a nice blitz dialed up, but it was all in vain. Young man just got his, you know, mitts on the face mask there, and it's going to cause a 15-yard penalty. And so that's going to march him past midfield. And so they're gaining yards the, the wrong way here by getting a penalty. But it's going to set up an automatic. It should be an automatic first and ten. Yeah, penalties haven't bitten the uh, haven't bitten the Eagles too much, but it is their third penalty of the second quarter. And so the ball's going to be at the 46 now, and it looks like it's going to be second and five. And he rolls out to the left again, and he is being pursued, and he throws it to the turf. And so 20 seconds left here in this half, and so Corning's trying to get something cooking. <laughs> yeah, but. Medea has been screaming mayday so far right. in this first half. His offensive line hasn't given him too much time to throw the ball. I know they're trying to get him outside the pocket and run, but he still has at least two or three defenders in pursuit. Offensive line needs to clean that up if they want to be successful in the second half. And this defensive line proving very fast on the run because they close on the quarterback very quickly within three seconds. And so usually that's a good rule of thumb if you can keep the quarterback to throw it within three seconds you know, it's going to be forced. And so he throws it down the field, and it's going to be over everybody's head. And so Colton Peterson was the attended receiver on the play, but he throws it out of bounds, and it's going to be uh, an incomplete pass. 15.4 seconds left. Yeah, I like the play call there, though. You know, try just try to test the secondary. They really haven't been tested too much. Try to test them with the speed of uh, Colton Patterson. Or, excuse Peterson. me, Colton Peterson right there. And, uh, you know, good play call just wasn't quite executed as it was on the chalkboard. So we'll see what the Cardinals do here on fourth down. Whatever they do, it's probably going to be a quick out-of-bounds play. Or it looks like they're actually going to be bringing the punt team on. And so the punt team will come on here. And Giovanni Garcia is their punter. And so they're going to look to try to shave some time off of here and then go back into the locker room and sort out their troubles yeah they better not they should not kick this to Clark right now that could be a dangerous move and so they kick it off and so Clark is going to pick it up and he does have the sideline here and he's going to be tackled and Thomas Lowe with the initial contact on that play and so Austin Clark didn't get very much there, but there's only two seconds left, so they're going to come in and probably kneel here to go into the into halftime. <laughs> well, this first half has certainly gone by in a blink, as you said. We're not even not even barely an hour an hour into this game, barely not an even, hour and in, in this game. Not even game, 45 minutes. Not even 45 minutes, and we're already looking at halftime. Which, if you're the Eagles, you're saying that's just fine, but the Cardinals clock is your enemy now and so here we go we're going to get one more play off and so it's going to be a handoff to number seven Brady Castleman and that's going to end it here for the first half so that's the end of the first half of play <clears throat> with West Valley leading Corning by a score of 14 to nothing. We'll be back in a few moments with the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Don't go anywhere. It's Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports.
Welcome to the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Coming to you from Cardinal Stadium in Corning, California. I'm Frank DiRienzo alongside Nick Dobis. Our halftime score is the West Valley Eagles are leading the uh, Corning Cardinals 14 to nothing. Sorry, got something in my throat. No, that's no problem, my friend Frank. Now, just looking at this game, if you just go back to the keys of the game that we talked about, you know, we asked ourselves, can you know the Eagles win momentum in the second and third quarters? Now, technically, they scored at the end of the first quarter, but that touchdown really changed the momentum and the complexion of the game. The Eagles really, you know, fed off that and eventually had a nice drive the next time they had the ball to force it a two-point, I mean, a two-score game. So they currently hold the momentum right now, and uh, you know, they if they can hold on to that momentum, maybe put another two scores up on this game, then this might be over for the books. Now, for the Cardinals, I felt that they needed to establish themselves offensive line early and often and wear down that the the front of the Eagles, but it's been vice versa. The uh, The Eagles have shown that they've come up to play smash mouth football and have really taken it to that offensive line. And, you know, Ch- uh, Chase Made really hasn't had time to throw. The running game hasn't been clicking. And if the Cardinals want to have to get any chance of getting back in this ball game, their offensive line has to, you know, take some pride and really reestablish itself in the second half. Well, what I noticed in the first half is that uh, it's really been a battle of uh, down in the trenches with the offensive line and the defensive line. And so Corning's offensive line has been proved very, uh, a lot of holes in there because uh, the, the quarterback's getting pressured and uh, so is the running backs, and they're not getting that initial push that they need to. And West Valley has been... Uh, doing that on the defensive line. And then also uh, West Valley's uh, offensive line also has been given that initial push. And they're, you know, they're making the holes and everything for the running backs to run through. And so, you know, like they say, they always say, you know, the game is won and lost in the trenches. And so that's what I've noticed first in this first half. Yeah, the Eagles offensive line is definitely winning the war on their side with a few battles lost here and there. But if the Eagles want to start winning the war, they have to win the battle of first down. They can't allow their offense to start off the next play second and long, forcing a third and long, eventually forcing a punt. If they can maybe mix it up on offense, throwing some different pass plays on first down, some different running plays, but they can't go from first and ten to second and long or second and nine because that's really has been the difference in this game. If they can fix that, they have a decent chance of getting back in this game. And so, like we mentioned in the pregame, that uh, Corning's defense has uh, proven uh, just a little rusty here tonight on senior night. And uh, like we said before, they had five guys who averaged four tackles a game, you know, and if you really think about that, that's only 20 tackles. And so uh, the rest of the time, it's just, uh, it's obviously not tackles, it's touchdowns and passes and yeah, all that no. stuff. And so they need to clear up those woes in this second half. Yeah. Um, and definitely going into next season. Absolutely. Well, they got a big stop at the end of the first half, which I think you know, gave this defense a lot of confidence and hopefully gives them a lot more confidence in, in the second half because they're going to need some sort of huge play, either a score or a big turnover that gets their offense in the red zone because you know the Redbirds have not been anywhere close to the red zone so far in this first half. So they're going to need their defense or a special teams play to really put them in the position, that offense in the position to score. And so the teams are coming back onto the field. So that's going to do it for our PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Friday Night Football will return in just a few moments with the start of the second half. Right here on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com.
Street. You're watching PlayOnSports.com's presentation of Friday Night Football live from Corning, California. I'm Frank Durienzo with Nick Dobis, as always. The West Valley Eagles are leading the Corning Cardinals 14 to nothing as we're about ready to start the second half, half of action here. And, well, no time to talk. Let's, let's just get it started. Maybe get out of here early tonight, you know? <laughs> we'll have to see. I mean, with uh, the way that both of these teams have been running the ball, we could very easily be out of here well before 10 o'clock. And so as we're waiting here, and I'm not sure if the officials aren't ready or what's going on down on the field. Everybody's kind of looking at everybody else. Oh, and so the referees are discussing it on the uh, top half of your screen there. And so we're waiting for them to get into position. And just a quick score update here in the Division Two Northern section. Central Valley is leading... Anderson 42 to nothing at the half so they it looks like they have the uh, looks like they have the uh, the Northern League title locked up pretty nicely unless they completely collapse in that second half and so with the kick it was supposed to be a little onside kick but it turns out to be a line drive right to Matt Chain and Matt Chain is the uh, their fullback and linebacker and so they're going to get excellent field position right at midfield yeah the Cardinals try to you know Try to get the ball back right away with a little onside kick there of the of some device, but just gives the Eagles some awesome field position here. And so first and ten on the fifty, as they have a man in motion, they're gonna hand it off to number seven, who's trying to follow a block, and he does make it through, and he's still pushing down past the thirty-five yard marker, and so it's gonna be just about thirty-three. And so that was Brady Castleman. And so the offensive line given a great push there. Yeah, great push, but especially from lead blocker Tyler Ward with uh, pulling from, I believe, his guard position right there. Really set the edge and gave Hasselman the, the room to wiggle and get some good yardage for the first down. And so it's going to be a first and 10 on just about the 33-yard line now as they have two running backs in the backfield and two receivers out, and they're going to hand it off to number 10 and he does have a hole he's get through but a flag is on the field and so that was Austin Clark on the run but we'll have to see what the initial call is it might be holding against the offense as it was thrown right where the lineman would be yeah usually when a play results in a nice game like that she just either some great blocking or someone you know got their hand in the cookie jar and was holding a little bit so and no they're gonna pick up the flag off the field so there is no penalty and so it's 11.18 left on the clock, and on the re referee's whistle, it should resume. And right on cue, it happens. I'm a genius. I'm a genius <laughs> up here. <laughs> and I think they're, yes, they are going to have a play here. <laughs> My cognitive you, abilities. You, see, you far saw that coming. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And so they have a receiver in motion. And he hands it off to Clark, who could bounce outside, and he does. And it's out to the right-hand side down the sideline. And so a great pick up there is going to put him just around the five-yard line. And so Austin Clark proving to be elusive. Yeah. Colton Peterson had a big hit at the end of the first half, but I think got a little embarrassed after that stiff arm right there <laughs> by uh, Austin that Clark. That what? That stiff arm oh, right there. Oh, stiff arm. And uh, Austin Clark able to throw, like I said, a beautiful stiff arm and get his team within a first and goal situation. And so it's first and goal on the five-yard line. And so they're going to go with the same, and they're going to do a little end around with uh, number two, and it looks like he's just going to waltz in. And so that's Marcus Simmons, the 5'9", 160-pound wing. That's what it says here on my offensive. He is just the wing back, so... <laughs> Which is awesome. And so... Yeah, 165 pounds, maybe 170 pounds soaking wet, maybe. But uh, has the speed in the side right there to follow the line, and that puts the Eagles up three scores. And like you said, good vision to cut it back up through the line. And so it's a five-yard touchdown. And with this kick, it's going to be 21 nothing now. So West Valley proving their medal here in this game. And so with the start of the second half, they're just repeating the first half all over again. Yeah, very nice, efficient drive like they had uh, to start their first series in the second quarter. 
And if you're the corning defense, you know, that's not quite the start that you wanted. You wanted, you know, some sort of inspirational start to start the second half. But that's going to have to come out of their offense right now, who hopefully made some adjustments to, uh, you know, throw some different looks at this Eagles defense because they have not been fooled at all in the passing game. So we'll see what the Cardinals have cooked up at halftime. And uh, all their other games, they've averaged 285 yards per game. And we have yet, I don't think they've even broken the 100-yard mar mark yet in offense. And so they're going to have to get that going. Um, they do have six running backs with more than 100 yards and have accumulated 2,564 yards on the ground for Corning. And so that's a stout number, but that's not showing up today. And they've only had uh, three guys that have ran, but they have gone nowhere. Yeah, you know, they're, they're very committed to the run, and it's very easy to be committed to the run when the offensive line has established itself, found that rhythm, and is, you know, running on all cylinders. But this Eagles defense has really thrown a monkey wrench in that plan. And, you know, they, like I said, the offensive line has to get going if the, the Cardinals have any chance of getting back in this game. And so they're not creating the holes that they that the running backs need to get through, and uh, their their running backs aren't exactly uh, you know really small guys. I mean, given unless uh, you know their smallest guy is one forty five, and so and that's Nathan Fultz, but I think that's uh, that's a little off there. He looks <laughs> like he's more closer to to one eighty. So we'll have to fact check that. But it is going to be returned here at just about the seven yard line and he's gonna get up past the twenty. And so that was that was Chase Bidet there on the return. Now the most successful pass play for the Cardinals in the first half was a screen play on third down that just got him the first down. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some more just kind of creative passing plays, either out of, through the screens, maybe some you know, some pop passes right over the linebackers' heads, but they're going to have to mix it up a little bit to fool this Eagles defense. And so it's going to be a run, and he is going to get just a couple of yards here, maybe even four, and so it's going to be a second and six at just around the 25-yard line. Yeah, it looks like he had a nice hole right there until Matt Chain really put the chains on that one and uh, stopped the run, you know, stopped. Stop that play from getting any bigger. He's had a pretty decent game here from his linebacker spot. And so it is going to be a pass, and it is going to be caught, and we'll have to see where they'll put it here, but it looks like he does have enough for the first down, and so they're going to stop the clock. And so that was Trace Garrett on the completion. So looks that's like, a good reception. Yeah, it looks like he did, just did get that first down. Nice little hitch route, clean and clean cut back to the quarterback and gets the first down. And I think that's probably the second or third pass that's been completed all game for this Corning offense. And so with those little, those little uh, dump outs to the wide receivers, it could prove deadly against this West Valley offense. But as we see there on the little post route, that was an that wasn't the case. It was out of his hands. And so Chase Madej's accuracy is proving unsettling here. Yeah, and he, he just looks uncomfortable there in the pocket. Yeah, and one of these receivers is going to have to make a big play. They're going to have to one of them is going to have to either break a tackle or run a really crisp out to break a tackle and really, you know, make a big play in order to help their quarterback out and this offensive line out as well. And so it's going to be a handoff and he's going to try and get through, but he's not going to. And that was Nathan Fultz. And so the pulling linemen and everything not getting off their blocks. And the defensive line is proving way too quick for this offensive line. And so they can't get anything done there. And so it's going to be a no gain. Yeah, they and tried to run the sweep out right there. And that was a similar play they ran in the first half. But once again, Jeremy Williams set in the edge. Didn't, didn't make the tackle this time like the last time, but was able to force the running back back in where all the other defenders were. So nice job setting the edge. And Corning's ready here. And he's going to pass it, and he throws it down for Peterson. Colton Peterson down the sideline, but it's going to be overthrown. And so he was open there, but uh, it was just a little miscommunication by the quarterback, and 
And like we said before, that Chase Madej has not looked comfortable in that pocket throwing the ball. And so that proves for a three and out there. And so it's going to be fourth and ten on the 32-yard line, and the punt unit is coming out on the field. Yeah, Chase hasn't really had a chance to get a comfortable all game. He's been, you know, chased all around, no pun intended, by this defensive front for the Eagles, and the offensive line really hasn't had a chance to uh, give him some time to throw. Man, you're the king of those puns, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a win. <laughs> and better so better number 10 line. breaks it out to the right-hand side. He's past midfield. And just about the 42-yard line. And so Austin Clark proving to be a, an effective return man. Very or nice. return young adult, I should say. <laughs> well, young man, I should say. Uh, yeah, he, he had a nice return there, but Brady Castleman was fortunate not to get a clip on that play. It was very close, but the officials let it go. But uh, that play could have gone either way and could have costed the Eagles some critical yards. And so they give him a yard on the spot, and so it's going to be at the 39-yard line. Well, just about the 40-yard line. And so they give him just a yard or two on the spot because I'm pretty sure he landed at about the 42. And so West Valley has one running back now, and they're going to hand it to that running back in a huge hole there, and it's going to prove... <coughs> to be effective here and Brady Castleman and he and the defender is just going to get his leg and bring him down but if he would have got past him he would have been in the into the end zone very easily and so it's going to be a second and one with 830 left here in this quarter yeah Derek Knight and Jason Brown on the left side of the offensive line have had fantastic games giving Castleman some real running room all game and so it's going to be a handoff to Austin Clark on the right-hand side on the top of your screen, and he's going to have the first down and then some. And so it's going to be down at just about the, I'd say, 18-yard line, maybe even the 17. And this Cardinals defense just looks a little tired right now. They've been beat up for most of the game, been trying to keep this their ball club in it, but they're starting to wear thin. And you can see now on your screen that the defense is huffing and puffing down there. And so the longer they stay out there, the less effective they are. And so with two receivers on the right-hand side, and we're going to see Austin Clark in motion here. But he's going to hand it off to number seven, who breaks one tackle, maybe two, and he's going to be inside the 10-yard line, just right around the five. And so West Valley proving to be effective in the red zone. And so that was Brady Castleman, and we've called his name all game. That's right, and they got him with a nice little play design there. Get the off, get the defenders looking on the motion and come right back at him in the trap play. Pick up some nice yardage and force once again a first and goal on this five-yard line. And so it's going to be first and goal. Be the Cardinals here. Colleague said. <laughs> If you're the Cardinals here, you know they're going to be running the ball, so I would, I would think about sending them to the house. And so they are going to run the ball with uh, number eight now, and it is going to be a touchdown. And so Cody Waterman coming into the game and getting, getting a touch, and he's going to go in for a five-yard touchdown. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Marcus Simmons, number two. We are quite a ways away up here in this booth, so it's hard to read those numbers sometimes. No, very but. similar that sim, very similar play that Simmons uh, ran to get his last touchdown. Nice little offset power play, and once again made the nice cutback to uh, get the score. And this was uh, this game's about to turn into a laugher here with a few more scores. And so the kick is up and good. And so they're going to take a four touchdown lead now, 28 to nothing. And what advice would you give Corning now, now that they're behind four touchdowns? I don't. I think it's just going to be for pride now. Yeah, exactly, Frank. This is a very similar situation that we saw uh, down in Gridley last week. You know, Gridley and uh, an O and A team at the time was also down four touchdowns, four or three touchdowns at one point to Winters and. You know, uh, for these Cardinals, you know, a lot of them, 
this is the last time not only going to be a team, but for most of them, this is going to be the last time they set foot on this field. So that's what you're going to be playing for now is playing for each other, playing for that pride, and, uh, you know, just trying to enjoy the moment as much as you can because you know after this, it, that's probably going to be the end of your season. And the end of the career for some of these for some of these players, which is a uh, you know, harsh reality if you think about it, but, you know, this might be the last time that they ever play football. And so if I was a senior, I'd give 110, 130% if I could. Yeah. I mean, it's very emotional. Obviously, you wanted to win that last home game. And when I, you know, unless, you know, they really fire it up and pull a miraculous comeback here, that's not going to happen. But, you know, you would just want to leave this field with the best memories and the best effort that you can. And so Chase Day into the end zone, and so it's going to be a touchback. And so they'll start at the 20-yard line here with 7-10 left in the third quarter. And so like we said, West Valley's up by four touchdowns. Yeah, Frank, you know, this is this team will probably end up being 5-5, five and five, but if you look at Corning High School's history, they've won 11 Northern Section CIF championships since 1973 and finished number two in the Cal High ratings with a 96 with an 11-1 record and 97 with a 12-0 record. The last CIF championship was 10 years ago this season. Unfortunately, they won't be able to fulfill that prophecy. And so it's going to be a running play to one of the 30-somethings. Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be Colton Connolly, number nine. And so they're switching it up here. <laughs> but he uh, he gets a good push there and uh, to gain just about four yards. So it's going to be second and six on the 24-yard line. You know, we were talking about the seniors being this last game. But, you know, the, as a junior, you know, this is the last time you're going to be on a football field and really should prove yourself you know, to the coach before you have a long off season. So you want to get all the best reps that you can. And so it's going to be a fake update they need. Yeah, Colton Connolly not only carrying the load on offense right now, but last week he had five tackles in the sack in that game against Wairika. So a proven player on both sides of the ball. And so it's going to be a keeper. Oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be uh, Fultz. Nathan Fultz, and so a gain of two, and so it's going to be second and eight at just around the 34-yard line now. And that's the other thing I would think they are going to be focused on. Let's try to get Fultz into that 1,000-yard mark and, you know, pay some respect to the young man who's had a fantastic season. So hopefully he does reach that mark. I'm not sure. He had a nice little 15- to 20-yard scamper earlier in the first half. Not too sure how close he is to that 43-yard mark now. And so as we're ready here, and he's going to hand it off to Connolly, who's going to fight for some tough yards there. And it's going to be a third and two. And so nice little pick up there. And it's going to be just about the 41-yard line, maybe in the 40-yard line. And they have to get to the 42 to convert. But they're making, they're making a little progress here. They're driving out. But they are eating up a ton of clock here. so Yeah, very slowly but very surely marching down the field right now. I'd like to see them pick up this first down and hopefully progress the ball. And so it's going to be a handoff to Fultz, and he breaks away, and he has the speed to do it. And they're going to bring him down at just about the 33-yard line. So a great run there by Nathan Fultz. And so that's the little spark they needed, and... They needed him to run well this game, and now that's the first run we've seen that, uh, well, that maybe the second time we've seen it this game, but uh, we just know he is capable if he does get that corner. Yeah, that's the first time we've really seen him explode, and that's the, really the first time that we've seen poor tackling out of this Eagles defense. Fultz was able to slip out of two tackles right there and make the nice first down run. So, but uh, like I said, a very rare missed tackles by the Eagles on this defense, which has shown, proven their strength, and their speed uh, as a defensive unit. And so with that timeout, Play On Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep, keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. So do you Twitter during games? I do not Twitter during I, games. I do not also. I know our other fellow broadcaster, uh, 
Matt Mullinger. He does Twitter during games and stuff. And I've never been a big fan of Twitter, but you know, it's kind of cool because uh, you get connected with you know the other reporters and other agencies in the northern section, and you can kind of follow games around. So uh, if uh, you know if you're not interested in this game right now. Um, we'll see what, uh, check over the, our other crew with Matt Mullinger right now and see how they're doing. I'm not sure, quite sure what game they're doing tonight. Do, do we know guys or no? No. So, but, uh, yeah, you could definitely follow us on Twitter and you can get updates on the, uh, the scores and even stats during the game as well. So it's a nice little feature to have. So Ron informs me that it's Paradise and Las Plumas. That's the game they're doing. And so it's going to be a little handoff here, but he's going to be stuffed just about the line right at the line and so it's not going to be a very big gain here and so Connolly there on the handoff doesn't get much and like we said before that's the uh that's the name of the game so far yeah but this is uh this is the really the first time even though down by four scores that we've seen the Cardinals at least somewhat consistently drive the ball down the field and actually pick up multiple first downs so it's good to see that they haven't really given up in this game, and they're trying to put some points on the board for Pride. And so with that, they're ready to go here, and he's going to hand it off to Connolly, who goes up to the left side here, but he's not going to get very many yards now, and so it's going to be a third and long, about third and seven, I'd say, and just under four minutes here left in the third quarter, so that clock is just going to keep on a rolling. Yeah, I'm really glad I had an opportunity to see this West Valley team to play with its 8-1 and one record. I've been really impressed with uh, not only the discipline of their defense so far, but really the speed of it as well, not allowing Corning to uh, win those battles when they try to test it on the outside. And quite honestly, maybe one of the faster defenses I've seen in the uh, Division Two. And so he's going to hand it off to Nathan Fultz, and he's going to be stuffed at the line. And so that's the stuff we were talking about there as the offensive line has failed to push this defensive line around. And so the defensive line is just manhandling the Corning offensive line, and so their running backs have gone nowhere, and that was a classic example right there. Yeah, they're not very big as a team, uh, especially on the front for the, uh, for the Eagles, but they get off the ball well, they make the right reads, and they fly to the play. And you got to love that as a defensive coordinator. And so he's going to pass it here, and it is going to be caught. And so Colton Peterson on the reception, and so that is going to be enough for the first down. And so showing a little spark here, and that was the play that they needed. And so they convert on fourth and eight to go to, it's going to be first and ten on just about the 17-yard line. Yeah, I believe that was their fourth first down of this third quarter, and that's doubled what they had all in the first half. So very surprising to see some life in them right now. And so he's going to hand it off at the middle, and a good little fake there to fake me out. And so so Connolly, their fullback on the run there, and we're just closing in on two minutes left in this quarter. And so Cardinals are knocking on the door here. They're inside the red zone on the 16-yard line. Yeah, I'm surprised Connolly hasn't gotten some more carries earlier in the game. I think his height is really troubling this uh, Eagle defense. And so it's going to be a pass, and it's going to be incomplete. Colton Connolly, the intended receiver, and he can't hold on to it. He wasn't going to get really much there anyway. It was probably going to be, a, even if he did convert, it was going to be about four yards. Yeah, I didn't really make a play for his team there, but I really like, I mean, at five foot five, he's probably one of the, I mean, we've seen some really small backs in both Division Two and Division One, but he's got to be one of the shortest, and I think that might be confusing the, uh, the Eagles' defense a little bit because he gets lost behind that offensive line. And so Corning looking to pass here, and he passes it down, and, oh, it is almost brought in for Peterson. And so that'll bring up fourth and nine here on the 16-yard line. And so just under two minutes, about 152 left in this quarter. And we'll have to see here. They are going to go for it, yeah, but we'll have to see what kind of play they call. Yeah, because we'll see what they call because uh, Madde took a huge shot by Tracy Dalton on that last play who was blitzing from his safety position. 
Luckily, he got the ball off, but took a took a huge whack on the back right there. So hopefully, he's able to uh, you know catch his breath and make a nice fourth down play here for his team. And so they're making sure they get the they're making extra sure that they call the right play here. And so it is going to be a pass play, and he throws it down for the fade. And Colton Peterson cannot throw it, but it is there is going to be flags in the area, and so it might be pass interference, which will give them the first down. And so we'll wait for the call here. And you know that does it might not sound too much of a compliment, but that was Madej's best pass of the night. I think it was on target. The receiver, or excuse me, the defender had his head turned. Madej saw that, just put the ball up for his receiver to make a play. Couldn't make the play, but got the pass interference call. Nice throw there. And so it's going to be a pass interference call here. And so they're going to spot it at just about the six-yard line. Or close to it. It was... It wasn't really on the 16. It was more of the 16 and a half. So it looks like it's just about the six and a half. Or the seven. Sorry. <laughs> you got to go with the ish rule all here when you right. don't have all the yard markers. <laughs> but you know me with my math. It's terrible. <laughs> Math's overrated anyways. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're going to hand it off to Connolly on the left-hand side. But he's going to get stuffed. <laughs> by a whole flock of eagles right there on that one. Just <laughs> swarming on on him right there, and there's that speed and that gang tackling by this Eagles defense we were talking about earlier. And if you want to be successful in the playoffs, you're going to see a lot, um, a lot more physical backs, a lot more you know tested backs with these better teams. And so that's an encouraging sign for this defense that you know even though it's a 28 to nothing game, they want to preserve that shutout and uh, have all the momentum going into the playoffs next week. And so the Cardinals are ready here, and he's going to hand it off. Here again, and he's going to get stuffed again. And so they're going to keep going with the run here, even though it's proving very ineffective down here and inside the 10-yard line. And so they're right at the 10-yard line now. Yeah. And so they're going to keep going with the run, even though it's proven terrible. Yeah, I think this was part of the original game plan for the Eagles defense, was just kind of squeeze the Cardinals down in the red zone and keep them out and force them into field goals or fourth and goal situations. Obviously, the uh, the Cardinals haven't had a chance, too many red zone looks in this game, but I think if, you know, if they were effective earlier in the game, that was the original plan, just squeeze them down, force them into difficult situations on the red zone. And so with 21 seconds left here in the third quarter timeout is going to be called and so the Cardinals are going to call timeout and make sure they get the right play in here and so what do you think it's going to be a pass or a run uh you know well I don't really see at this point why you don't you know why you don't try a pass you know you got into this first and goal uh you got in this goal line situation I should say because of a pass interference penalty you know you got to test your luck a little bit you're down 28 nothing. You don't really have too much else to lose. So, and obviously the Eagles aren't aren't quite ready to give up that shutout yet. So, I would test my chances in the air here and I mean it it is two down territory at this point. So, I try you know a little pass play maybe to the to the wide side of the field to the outs. If you don't get it, at least you get some yards and make it a fourth and goal in short and try to punch it in with the running game. And I wholeheartedly agree because even if it gets intercepted, they are on this side of the field. And so it makes a huge field if, even if they do intercept it and they're inside the 20 on this side. You know what I mean? So yeah. you really have nothing to lose to try for a pass here. And so that's what I would call if I was a coach. Yeah, but I, mean, but you, I mean, like I said, I think one of the problems with this Cardinals passing game is it's, it's very vanilla. It's... It's very black and white where they don't try to trick you with a lot of things. And this Eagle secondary has been, for the most part, all over it all day. But uh, like we said, you do have to t test your chances in the passing game because, you know, you've been stuffed the last two plays here. So it's going to be third and goal right about the 10-yard line. And they are going to pass here. And it's going to be overthrown. And they are going to get the defensive interference here. Oh, man. And so Peterson... The intended receiver. And so we'll have to see here what the official call is, but that's pretty. And so it's going to be pass interference 
against the defense, and so that's going to push it half the distance to the goal, and they're going to get a whole new set of downs here, and so it's going to be a first and goal at just around the four and a half, uh, maybe even the five. Yeah, and they've been picking that guy. He, uh, I can't find him on the roster. Number 15 is just the mystery man on the roster right now, but whoever number 15 is, they were picking on they picked on him the last time to get the first pass interference, or pass interference penalty, and they got him again on that one. And so it's going to be a run by Nathan Fultz, and he does find a little hole there, and he tries to get through. And so he fights hard to make it to just down to about the one-yard line, and so a good little push. And with that alarm, the third quarter is over, and so Corning Cardinals knocking on the door. And we'll have to wait till the fourth quarter to find out if they're going to make a touchdown or not and try to avoid the shutout here by West Valley, who has proved very effective in all aspects of the game. Yeah, you know, we talked about at halftime, key for the Eagles was, you know, to win the momentum and the points in the second and third quarter. And they most certainly have done that, scoring two touchdowns in this half and one touchdown in the second quarter. They've, you know, they come out of the locker room and have really, really have held, you know, the momentum for most of this half. And uh, just an update for you, number 15 is Tyler Bennett was uh, was the man getting picked on in the red zone down there. And so, as a cornerback, you never want to do that. You never want to draw two defensive pass interference penalties. I mean, it just drives the coach nuts. No, and yeah, and I think that's that. why he came out after right. that last one. You, sure. you get the you get some leeway on the first one. Quarterback uh, uh, Made made a nice throw, but you know, you, you can't make that uh, mistake twice and expect to stay in the game. And so they're going to switch field, switch the field here as we move down to the opposite end of the field, and they have it on the one-yard line or maybe even the two, and so it looks like it might be a handoff here to, to Cody Long, and it's going to be a touchdown for Corning Cardinals, and so they avoid the shutout here, and so it's going to be a 7-28 to game, and they are back in it now as the Corning Cardinals bell is going to be rung. Yeah, it's getting rung, but it might be... Running a little bit too late here. Nice running play. I love the tenacity of the Cardinals to stay in this game, drive all the way down the field and score. But like I, as I said before, they don't quite have the offense. It, they're not quite equipped with the offense to come back and overcome a three-touchdown deficit. So we'll see if they maybe try another onside kick here. And so Juan Serrano's kick is up, and it is good. And so it's going to be 7-28 to 28 now. And so that looks a lot better than 28 to nothing. Yeah, you know, that's always a big relief on, on a team. No team, you know, no matter what division or what level of football wants to get shut out. So especially on senior night here. So, you know, not too many moral victories you can take out of this game, but that's definitely one of them right there. And so with that score, they, uh, they are certainly in position. If uh, things start going their way on defense, they could be right back in this game with three touchdowns. But, I mean, that chance is getting slim very slim. It's going from slim to none, I think. Yeah, but, well, I, I imagine, as I said, you're right, Frank. I imagine they're going to try to do an onside kick here. The Eagles have been very efficient with the ball, especially in the second half. Have not made really any mistakes. So, you you know, you, if you're the Cardinals, you're not too eager to give the ball right back to them. So I imagine they're going to try some sort of onside kick. And so, yeah, because they don't want uh, Austin Clark, who's racked up a whole bunch of return yards here, and when they kick it back off to him, he's getting it near near the 40-yard line or even midfield. And so they're going to prove it's going to well, – I'm excited to see what they're going to do. <laughs> well, it would be exciting to see if they get the ball back and make this a two-score game. So we do just you – know, I mean, we're just under 12 minutes here. So crazier things have happened in the sport of football. So, uh, And I think the Cardinals are hoping for that to happen right now. And so with the kickoff, the Corning fans are going to get up onto their feet. And so we're waiting.
and Serrano kicks it up, and it goes just about 10 yards, and they do get the ball back. And so a mistake by West Valley. They did touch it first, and there is going to be a flag here. And so we're going to have to see what they're going to call. I'm not quite sure what the the call is might be. They might be calling if the ball didn't go 10 yards, but the but the player touched it, which makes it a live ball no right. matter what. So I think the officials are going to talk about this, and hopefully, I mean, at this point, it looks like it should be Cardinals' ball. Yeah. So... The officials waved off the f penalty, but yeah, I'm just as confused as you are. Are they? Is that going to be a re-kick or? Oh well, if that's and that's so the coaches are going to be talking to the officials here, and so the corning corning crowd turning on the officials here. And, and is it going to be a re-kick here? I'm, I'm yeah, not sure uh, about that call. I'm not quite sure about that call either, Frank. You know, the ball, the ball. I mean, it has to be traveled ten yards for the kicking that's team to touch it. That's only if nobody touches it. But that's if no one touches it. You know, if the if the receiving team can touch it before ten yards, I'm not. I, you know, the officials even look as confused as we are at this point right now. And, and so it's going to be a re-kick here, and the Corning fans are not very happy about this decision. Oh, and yeah. neither are the coaches. And so they're going to have to file a grievance with their union. <laughs> <laughs> and well. so here we go again. And so it's going to be up. Well, the, the Eagles just got away with one right there. I've got, I've got a, a nice... <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm, to be frank, I'm a little... I'm a little speechless of Actually, kind of what I'm, happened here. I'm, I'm Frank. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, wow, kind of a curious, not really, I mean, maybe we can get an explanation after the game, but kind of a curious turn of events. And that could have been a huge, potentially a huge play in this game, getting the Cardinals the ball back. And with seven seconds. With se know, only gone. seven seconds gone on the clock. Right. So the Eagles are must have to be counting their blessings at the the call not went like their they, way. Not like they needed it either. And so here we go. We have a man in motion. And so he's going to turn back the opposite way, and it's going to be handed off to Austin Clark. And so he's going to fight his way for seven yards there. And so it's going to be a second and three on just about the 43-yard line. So a bizarre event in this game. Yeah, very bizarre. And, uh, I mean, we'll potentially – I mean, not to say that, you know, Car the Cardinals would have gone back and scored a touchdown and, you know, really fired it up, but it could have happened. So, it, it, you know, the, the complexion of this game definitely did change a little bit with that, score, with that, uh, that call right there. And so it's going to be handed off to Austin Clark again, who breaks through, and he breaks another tackle, and he is finally going to get tripped up at just about past the 35-yard line to just about the 34. And we'll have to see where they spot it here, but an excellent run. And he's proven elusive here in, in this second half. And so Austin Clark, like we said before, he's become the all-around athlete, and he's proven it here in this game. Yeah, he's an all-around athlete, but I, I tell you what, he owes the left side of his offensive line some double-doubles in and out after this game because they have really opened some nice holes for him and given him the running lane that he needed. Hey, you're giving me a ride. Mind if we stop there before <laughs> I go home? <laughs> and so it's going to be a handoff here, but he's going to be stuffed at the line. And so maybe a half-yard pickup. And so 10.43 left in this ball game. And so Cardinals good holding the line there. Yeah, I, you know, I, know, I know that play is you know, dead and gone now, but it would have been really interesting to see what the explanation was on that onside kick, especially with the way the, uh, the Eagles are driving down right now. I mean, not too much has changed. The Eagles have continued moving down the field as they have all in the second half, but one play can change the game. And so it's going to be a handoff to Brady Castleman, who is in line to win our player of the game, I'm sure, because he had an excellent, very long... Yeah, he had that 73-yard run to... Uh, 
as time expired in the first quarter. And it was kind of, you know, a back-and-forth game at that point until Castleman blew it up and kind of, you know, established the initial momentum of the game. And so Josh Savio in there. And he's going to hike it here, and he's going to hand it off to Clark, who runs into his own defender. And so he gets stunned by the back of his own defender there. And so he's going to be hitting the backfield, and so it's going to be a fourth and long. So a fourth and six here with just about nine minutes left in this game. And so we're going to have to see if they go for it here or it's going to be a kick, a field goal. It looks like they're getting some really tight splits on that. Oh, no, they're just huddling up from the line. Let's see what kind of formation they come out here with, though. I thought they were going to try the field goal from back there. That didn't make any sense. Well, they're just Ooh. standing around out there. And it's like, oh, they haven't made a play yet. And so he's going to hand it off to number seven, and he's going to be stuffed before the first down marker. So it looks like it's going to be a turnover on downs. And so Corning's going to get the ball back. Yeah, Brady Castleman had uh, dreams of getting the first down there, but his dreams were awoken from that dream quite quickly. <laughs> and the Cardinals get the ball back, and uh, you know I would like to see them move the ball the same way they did the last time. You know, obviously the game's a little bit out of reach. I mean, maybe this would be the perfect time for some sort of gimmick trick play with uh, you know al literally almost nothing left to lose. So. See if the Cardinals come out with any fireworks here on this drive. So the dream was awoken by the dream. Sounds like some inception. Yeah. Kind of Just stuff a little here. bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are we in a dream? I don't know. And so it's going to be a pass out to Peterson. It looks like, and it's and Chase Madey's accuracy, like we've said, is way off today. He hasn't thrown an accurate pass all night. Maybe one or two out of the maybe ten he's thrown. And so it's going to prove ineffective here. So there's 8.38 left in this game, and the Cardinals are down by three scores, 7-28 to 28 for West Valley. Yeah, and I think his comfort as a quarterback in, you know, in the throwing game really relies on that running game you know, being effective and being strong. The more confidence he has in that running game, the more confidence he can throw the ball, just like that right there. And so he completes it to Colton Peterson there, and so it's going to be... Uh, very close to the first down marker, and so it's going to be a second and short, or a third and short, excuse me, with time winding down, eight minutes left to go. And so if I was the Cardinals right now, if they weren't going to try for it all, at least try to end this game out with a possession. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised. Exactly, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the Eagles linebackers creep up up most of the line right here. You know, your, your secondary, except for two penalties, has played well, so just send the house. And so it's going to be a handoff here, but he's going to go nowhere, and he's going to be brought back. And so with forward progress, uh, he didn't even get forward progress. He lost yards on that. So it's going to be a fourth and short, a fourth and two, I'd say. And send the house the Eagles did on that one, blitzing both inside linebackers and uh, just putting their faith and that secondary to go man-to-man, -man, and they've done pretty well all night. So we'll see if the, uh, the Cardinals come out throwing here. And so as we're waiting for the a play to be run in here, as Peterson li lines up at the top of your screen, and they're ready with their little quick... And so it's going to be... He's going to throw complete to Peterson, and so they pick up the first down here, and he did get out of bounds, so that's going to, well, he got the first down anyway. It's going to stop the clock here. It's 7.01, and so they're driving down the field, and so, you know, they hit a little hiccup there, but they converted it. Yeah, and, the, you know, Chase Madej, you know, made his nicest completion of the, uh, of the night right there. Really, finally, for the first time, setting his feet, has his eyes downfield on the target and was able to throw a nice dart for that bullseye and get the first down. And so it's going to be a handoff here, but it's going to go nowhere. Uh, 
And so no gain there, and so it's going to be a second and 10 on just about the 40-yard line. And so Corning can't be happy with this, the play they've had tonight. No, but you know what? Yeah, they can't be really happy, but tip of the cap to that front, especially that defensive line from the Eagles, really not letting that offensive line establish itself and get anything going for this Cardinals offense. And so we're ready here. And he is going to have a pass here, and he's under pressure, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield, and so he's going to lose a bunch here, probably just almost 10 yards, and so it's going to be a third and plenty. And right on cue, you know, Sammy Veianuku bursting through that line, and uh, that's been the story of the game, has been uh, Chase Madej running around the field, and uh, that defensive line, those linebackers just having a field day. Yeah, and Vanuku is uh, really a big kid, 5'10", 230. And so he's proven effective in this game. And he's one of those stars on the defensive line. You know, I, I mean, if you know, if I could give the player of the game to one individual person, it would be Castleman. But if I could give it to a group, it would be this front, uh, you know, 7 and 8 for the Eagles who have played outstanding. And, and so it's going to be a pass that's incomplete. And, you know, not only playing, you know, exceptional, but not giving up either. And, you know, so I, if I could give my game ball, it would be to that, that front line right there who's really taken over and controlled this game. And it's just like they've been in the quarterback's face all night, and so it's like the offensive line, is just, it did, it, they just didn't show up today at all. And the, as the Corning players come off the field, they're looking tired. And so the punt team goes on, and it's going to be... Yeah, and unfortunately for the Cardinals, it's been kind of a long season for them. But, they, you know, they could have a bright future coming up because uh, we watched earlier that their junior varsity actually went 10-0 and and won the Northern League JV title this year. So they could have a lot of, you know, at young athletes coming up and, you know, improving that roster for next year. So they might be a team to watch next year. And so 5.03 left in this game as we await the West Valley offense to come on here, and they're going to look to just probably run out the clock here. So I, uh, I'd i imagine we are have just about five more plays until this game is over. And so we're ready here as the Eagles line up. And so it's going to be a handoff up the middle, and he does break one tackle, but that's going to be Marcus Simmons. And so Marcus Simmons, 5'9", 160, so that's pretty much 5 nothing, 100 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not but a lot of weight care in the ball, but, right, but he, he adds a, that speed element to this offense to counter, um, you know, Castleman and... Uh, and Clark with the power, so he is he is very valuable in this offense, as we've seen, as he has scored two touchdowns, both from about five yards out. And so it's going to be another in-motion play, and it's going to be handed off to the fullback here. And we'll have to see, and that's going to be Brady Castleman, who looks like he's going to be our player of the game tonight. And we'll talk about him in the post-game show, which is coming up after. And we'd like you to stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show where we'll select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game that's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. And so there's four minutes with the clock running down here, and it's a first and ten on the 40-yard line, and it's going to be a handoff, straight handoff to Austin Clark, and he breaks away one defender, two defenders, and he's going to step out of bounds past the 35-yard line. And so it's going to be, I'm sorry, the 36-yard line. Yeah, you know, the Cardinals and their faithful are kind of hanging their heads right now, kind of putting the season to bed. But they need to realize that the Eagles are still playing here and still trying to, you know, put some yards and points on the board. So hopefully they can, you know, kind of wake up a little bit and at least 
in this game with a little bit more pride. And so since he did step out of bounds, it's going to stop the clock at 346, and so it's going to be a first and 10 on the 37-yard line as we have one, two receivers lined out and two running backs here. And so it's going to be a handoff to Austin Clark as he breaks outside, and he's going to be tripped up. And he picked just about picked up just about four yards in the play, so it's going to be a second and six right around the 30-yard line. Yeah, very nice, very nice open field tackle there by Trace Garrett coming from his cornerback position. If he doesn't make that tackle, Clark might be joining uh, Simmons and Castleman in the touchdown party right now. That's a good party to be in. <laughs> Wish I was in it, but I never get invited. We're, we're too old to be invited anymore. Yeah, I'm sorry. Invited. Tear. <laughs> and so it's going to be a handoff and he gets tripped up a little bit but he does gain positive yards and so we'll have to see if he's going to get it first down and since they stopped the clock it is going to be a first down here and so the clock will stop at just about 301 but it will get restarted right now and so under three minutes here as west valley's driving yet again and so I'd give everybody, every one of their offensive players the player of the game if I could because they have just proven effective at all aspects. Yeah, this offensive unit has really, I mean, you know, it's a cliche, but they really have played as a team on all levels at all positions. And so here's Austin Clark and cuts it back left, and so he has enough for another first down, and so he picks up just about 12 yards in that play. So a great run again, and they are threatening inside the red zone now. And so the ball's going to be spotted at just about the 14-yard line. And what's great about it is, you know, not only are the offensive line getting 5, 10, 15 yards on field, but the receivers are getting um, 5, 10, 15 yard field. It's like Dakota Carter had a nice block on that one. Don't get to see the ball a whole lot in this offense, but knows that it's important to make those blocks in order to move the ball and maybe get an opportunity. And so it's going to be a handoff up the middle here, and there is a flag, a late flag on the play. And so we'll have to see what that is, but it's going to be Austin Clark on the carry. And so we wait for the referee. And so it's going to be a personal foul against the defense and a personal foul against the offense. So those are those will offset. And so the ball's going to be right around the eight yard line. Maybe even the seven. What would you say? Seven-ish, uh, eight-ish. Oh, okay. And so they aren't going to offset, and so it's going to push uh, West Valley back. Yeah, it looks like they took away one of those uh, one of those personal foul penalties. And the one on the uh, the one on the Cardinals. And so the ball is going to be at the twenty-three yard line, and so. It was one evil for another, I guess. And so as the man is in motion here, and he's going to hand it off to Austin Clark, who has a huge hole, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. And so it's going to be a 23-yard pickup for Austin Clark. And so at the end of this game, they're packing on another six points here. And so with 151 left in this ball game, West Valley gets another touchdown here, and that's going to put them up by three scores again. Yeah. Or I mean by four scores now. Yeah, Austin Clark just, you know, riding the success on that left side of the offensive line and once he broke through that hole, there was no one there to touch him. He finally does join that party that we're not invited with. <laughs> Castleman and Simmons. And so Waterman with the kick, but it is wide wide right. And so it's only gonna be it's gonna be seven to thirty four now. They're not going to tack on that extra point. And so what more can we say about this game? It's been definitely one-sided here, and there's only been just a certain number of bright spots for this Corning team. But they can't feel too bad because they didn't get shut out. They did. They were able to muster up a touchdown. Yeah, no, they, they just didn't complete, uh, play a complete game. I felt that the defense uh, held its ground, You know, gave up 14 points, but I think played a decent first half. The offense wasn't really there in the first half. Second half, the offense showed a little bit sign of life, but the defense kind of collapsed upon itself. So as a result, you know, they didn't play a complete game, and 
The result is a you know 34 to 7 score right now, not in their favor. And so, with 151 left in this ball game, we're going to see West Valley kick off from left to right to Corning, and in the backfield, it's going to be Nathan Fultz and Taryn Dahlgren, their backup QB, back to return this. And we'll have to see if the kicker gets it back that far. He hasn't yet. But we'll see. And so... We're ready for the kickoff here. And so J.J. Waterman is going to get it. And Taryn Dahlgren has it. And he has some blocking. And he... <coughs> He breaks one tackle, and he gets brought down at just about the 43-yard line, so an excellent pickup there. And so that was a little bright spot, and yeah. it's just been very spotty, though. Yeah, very far and few between with those bright far spots. Far and few between, sure. You know, we talk about this Eagles team that's 8-1. Their one loss was to Central Valley, which is currently ranked second in the Northern Section Division II media poll. But despite their appeal with voters in the polls and have locked in, pretty much locked in the number two playoff spot, uh, after, I mean, before tonight, they were five and four, which is the seventh best record in, you know, the northern section. So this northern section division two playoff race could be really interesting because there's a lot of different dynamic teams in it. And so it's going to be a handoff to Fultz here, number 34, but he's going to go nowhere, which has been the call of it. So 130 left in this game and the clock's going to run down so we're only going to see a couple more plays here yeah. it's impressive what another thing that impresses me about this eagles team is uh last year they graduated austin lobsinger who was a fullback who averaged 4.7 yards a carry registered 109 tackles in the 2011 season and was also a two-time state runner-up in the 220-pound wrestling class. So he headed off to Simpson University to cause havoc on the wrestling mat on the college level. But the way, you know, even with his loss, they were able to bounce back this season and have production on both the defense and offensive side of the ball is impressive. And so with Nathan Fultz, he comes out to the left-hand side, so a pretty good run here is going to get him close to the first down, and they will give him the first down. And so 54.4 left in this game. If you're the Cardinals here, I don't, you know, I don't know if they have any sort of spread package at all, but this would be the time to do it or maybe even experiment with it next season. You know, if you, you know... The Cardinals have proven to run the ball effectively, but if you get them in, you know, a three or four touchdown hole, you know, they don't really have a chance to come back. So this might be a time to, you know, maybe put it, you know, try some plays you usually wouldn't try. And so time running down here under a minute now. And with the – that was a run there with no gain, and so it's going to be a second and ten at just about the 47-yard line. I imagine this could be the, the last snap we see here tonight and in, in the Cardinals season as well. And so, unfortunately, the Cardinals' season will end tonight. And that's going to not leave a good taste in the seniors' mouths as they leave. But, you know, they've had a good season. And so, under 10 seconds here, it's going to be handed off. And as the, the game draws to a close, West Valley Eagles have defeated the Corning Cardinals 34 to 7 and we want to award Castle. uh, Castleman Brady Castleman with our player of the game honors because uh, he definitely had a fantastic game he had a big 73 yard or yard run and uh, it was very hard to to pick any one player off of this West Valley team but you we know, picked him yeah no, that he is our selection for our player of the game Really, when this game was a back-and-forth tug-of-war in the first quarter, he broke it open with a 73-yard touchdown. Also added a 10-yard touchdown in the second quarter with about 6.40 left to go. And at that point, you know, the, uh, the Eagles were really in the driver's seat and never really looked back after that. So congratulations to the Eagles and uh, Castleman. And not only a great game tonight, but a fantastic season heading into the uh, playoffs. And uh, looking at this team, this could be an Eagles team 
you know, they didn't have the chance to play Sutter this year. And, uh, you know, I, as you said, you were impressed with Sutter the last when you saw them undefeated. The, don't know what happened in their game tonight, but they'll probably retain that number one overall pick. And, you know, how do you think they match up against this uh, this West Valley team? Well, when I saw Sutter, uh, they were getting it done on uh, three sides of the ball. They were playing a very three-sided ball with the special teams and the defense, you know, and they were very good. Uh, at. Mo- I mean, their offense was definitely the, the best. But I think what really contributed to them was their special teams. And and so the, we're going to have to see in the playoffs um, how good they're going to play there because spe- special teams isn't on the field all that much. And so, you know, it's a percentages game. And so we'll have to see how that fares through the playoffs. But I'm very excited for the playoffs to start now yeah, because the matchups are going to be fantastic. Yeah, no more a, blowouts. Yeah, there's a lot of intriguing ga- teams. Um, you know, I, li- I still like Orland as kind of an underdog. They can run the ball very well. And they can win some tight games with their kicker, Rojas, and stuff, as we've seen. You know, it hasn't been super accurate, but we know he does have the leg. They could be a potential dark horse to win this thing. Sutter has proven to be very strong. West Valley has had a very strong season, and including one of their wins was a 24-21 to victory over Enterprise, who's currently ranked number one in the section in D1. And, I mean, I could talk about the D1 playoffs all night as I want, but both the D1 and especially the D2 playoffs – are surely to uh, include some really intriguing matchups. And, you know, this is, you know, gut check time football-wise. So, we'll, well, I guess we'll have to see everyone next week and see what matchups we get. Well, that's going to wrap it up from Cardinal Stadium where the where the Eagles, the West Valley Eagles, uh, defeated the Corning Cardinals uh, 34-7. to And uh, we'd like to thank you for joining PlayOnSports.com's coverage of this regular season finale of Friday Night Football from Corning, California. Be sure to check PlayOnSports.com for information and links to all of our upcoming broadcasts. For our producer, Ron Borges, our videographer, Daniel Luna, and my partner, Nick Dobis, I'm Frank DiRienzo saying so long. And we hope you'll join us for the North Section Playoffs on your destination for high school sports and Friday Night Football, (laughs) PlayOnSports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot.